I'm experimenting with a PSK31 transmission and GNU radio. PSK31 is a common amateur radio digital mode. Uh, transmits differential uh, binary phase shift keying at 31.25 bits per second. I won't go into it any more than that. You can Google it. Well, what I wanted to do was uh, just do a simple way to transmit this in GNU radio. And to start off, you need a source. So this Python script generates a binary sequence that will feed the GNU radio modulator. Uh, first thing we do is uh, import the struct library. You'll see that at the end. Uh, second thing is, what are we going to transmit? Uh, I define an input string right here, which is a constant, my call sign, and then the quick found brown fox jumped over lazy dog and number 0 through 9, basic text and numbers. PSK31 uses very code. It's a variable length code. Uh, each code bit or each code sequence starts with one and ends with one and never has more than one zero in a row. So I've defined a Python dictionary right here which has a uh, key and a value. So you give it a uh, key which is the characters A through Z or numbers you know zero through nine and then that will return a value. In an instance, if we put an A into the uh, dictionary, we're going to get back 1011. So I copied this right from the uh, PSK31 article on ARRL website. So I go all the way up to 9 here. Then uh, we need to have a variable which is going to hold the translated uh, varicode string. So I initialize an empty variable right here called varicode string. Then I'm going to concatenate eight zeros onto that. So we're going to send an 8-bit preamble to start with. And eight because that's a that's a length of a byte. <laughs> and remember these are strings right here. They're not they're not numbers right now. They're just treated as a text string. So we're going to input a text key and get back a text string. So for each character in my input string, the quick brown fox jumped over lazy dog, I want to take and uh, send it into that dictionary and get back the very code. So I'm going to concatenate all these varicode sequences together. But after each sequence, I'm going to add two zeros. You notice there was only one zero in each one of those sequences. Two zeros is the uh, character that, that is an end of character sequence. So when the PC, BPSK31 receiver sees that, it's going to know that it's got a whole character. Uh, so after we've got this giant string of uh, ones and zeros, we're going to tack on an 8-bit post amble of all ones. And that will help synchronize the uh, synchronizer receiver because it's going to see a, a, a steady character then. So what I want to do now that we have this whole uh, giant string, uh, we want to store this thing in bytes. And it may, since it's very code, it may not be uh, evenly divisible by 8. So what I'm going to do is take module 8 of that string, and if it's not and it doesn't return a zero, I'm going to keep adding ones to it until it's a multiple of eight long. And we'll just take and print that out. So now I'm going to open up a file. This W right here stands for uh, write only, and B is for binary, but that really doesn't make a difference on uh, Unix. I think it's only on Windows you got to have that. So now I want to take and uh, grab eight bits from that string, or eight, eight characters at a time, ones or zeros. And I'm going to convert that to an unsigned byte. And I'm going to invert it. And I'll explain that in a second. Uh, and then write that to a uh, packed binary file with a system endianness. So we'll go through each. First I'll find the length of that string and divide it by 8. And of course it's going to be divisible by 8. Uh, so for uh, each one of those lengths of 8, we're going to work through that sequence, grabbing eight at a time. And this int uh, conversion right here, this two that you see right here, that takes and spits out a uh, binary, or it says it right to recognize it as binary. Then taking modulo 256 of that to the eighth converts it to unsigned 8-bit uh, byte, or character, I guess you could say. And then we're going to print that into the file. I think I'm going to close the file off. Why do we have to invert it? And this, I want to go off on a little rant here. Uh, the original PSK31 documentation and just about everything that's out there, which seems like a copy of the documentation, even on the ARRL website, um, 
they don't actually come out and say it's differential BPSK modulation. Originally, I thought it was, since that is the easiest way to do clock recovery, because you're guaranteed to have uh, the inversions in there are going to help you with that. But they don't say it, so I went with it, and I just, you know, assumed a zero was going to be one phase and one was going to be the other phase. Well, it didn't work very good. And I find some additional documentation that actually talked about differential encoding. Uh, and if you actually look at the AWL website, they actually kind of hint that it says if it transmits a zero, that means it's going to be an inversion, and a one is going to be a normal carrier. Well, if you read into that, it's differential BPSK modulation. It's just inverted from what you normally think. If you look up the Wikipedia article on DP, DBPSK, uh, the data that's about the bit that's about to be transmitted is XORed with the previously transmitted. Or the previous data bit and you know if you transmit a bunch of ones in a row that's going to invert each time it transmits so you end up with inverted bits you know alternating if you transmit all zeros then it's not going to invert so uh, psk 31 is the opposite of that if you transmit a, if you're going to transmit a zero that says invert it if you're going to transmit a one that says uh, don't invert it so that's why we have to have this tilde right here to invert it uh, because the uh, BPSK modulator in GNU Radio uh, is, has an XOR gate in there to encode it, and uh, it wants to see the one for the inversion. Now I run this and look at the output. Uh, here's my non-inverted varicode string. You can see the uh, uh, zeros right here in for the preamble, and you can see the ones for the postamble. And then right here, these are the uh, bytes I'm going to write out into the binary file, the non-inverted ones. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so anyway, now that we have a file, we can feed that into the GNU radio modulator. All right, here's the uh, that GNU radio portion of things. I've done it in a G GRC GNU radio companion block diagram generator. Let's start at the uh, file source right here. I take my binary file that I've written out for my Python program, and uh, we set the output type to a byte. You know, we've got all these different choices, uh, but that's what the PSK modulator wants coming into it. And we're going to tell it to repeat itself uh, continuously after it end, runs to the end of the file. Um, and uh, PSK modulator, uh, it takes in a byte at a time, and it starts with the most significant bit of that byte and maps that into a symbol. Uh, Looking at the variables we set uh, set for this thing, uh, two constellation points, BPSK, one point on the left, one point on the right. Uh, we don't want any gray coding of the data. Uh, difference in coding, yes, we want that. You remember we inverted the data back in the file, so it's uh, transmitted correctly with the differential encoding because this thing's got an got an uh, XOR gate. So we, uh, when this thing gets a one, it's going to uh, uh, shift the uh, phase and if it gets to zero it's not going to. Uh, samples per symbol, we set this to a higher number instead of just two so we get a little bit of better visualization. Uh, and then excess bandwidth, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, we know we've got 31.25 bits per second going into this thing and divide the by eight to get the bytes per second. Uh, uh, that data array is actually going to be set by the sync right here, which is running at 250,000 uh, samples per second. So we got to make sure when we do the uh, interpolation, we get back to 31.25. Now the excess bandwidth, uh, remember back to my digital comm class. Uh, ideally, we could do half, one half hertz uh, per bit per second. You know, ideally, but uh, and that would be an excess bandwidth of zero, and we can change this between zero and one. 100%. Uh, what happens if we go down to zero, you know, that, that's ideal right there. We've used our minimum bandwidth possible, but we get a much higher peak to average ratio, and that's going to cause, you know, we're going to have to have more headroom in our power amplifier, uh, uh, but we have a narrow transmit bandwidth. If we do an excess bandwidth of one, then we're going to have, you know, double the bandwidth that's really needed, but we're going to have a less peak to average ratio, and uh, get a much uh, uh, cleaner signal out of our PA because it's not going to uh, go into its nonlinear region, you know, assuming we're using a uh, Class AB amplifier or Class A. Uh, but, you know, the downside is is now we're receiver bandwidth is going to be twice as wide, so we're going to have twice as much noise coming into it as needed. So we're going to leave this default for uh, 0.35, no, 35%. Now, look at the PSK31 documentation. It calls out a 
uh, raised cosine filter. Normally you use a root raised cosine filter, a uh, square root of that response, and the reason is because on your transmitter you have a uh, uh, root raised cosine filter and on the receiver you have a root raised cosine filter. When you put those two together, you know, it's the true uh, uh, raised cosine response, but they also act as match filters for one another, so that's again your optimum uh, 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 reception right there with that match filter. I don't know if you can change this in GNU Radio to get it over. You could probably go into the, the block code for this and change it to a uh, raised cosine, but we're going to stick with root raised cosine. Uh, I don't think any PSK 31D modulators actually use match filtering, at least not some of the stuff that I've seen, so it's not going to make that much of a difference. Uh, so we'll stick with the root raised cosine. So coming out of this thing, uh, we're now at 31.25 symbols per second, so every bit we get in, we get one symbol out. Uh, and we're at 250 samples per second because of that multiplication right there. So we're going to take those samples and multiply them by uh, one half because uh, we don't want to overdrive our D to A. And you'll you'll see that in a second in the visualization. Uh, and again, you know, if we were to change the excess bandwidth, we were going to reduce that. Uh, we would need to reduce the multiplication on this thing so we don't uh, clip again. So I'm breaking this thing out into three paths. Uh, first, I'm going to take and interpolate it by 192 so I can get up to 48,000 samples per second. That's what my audio sync is going to be. But if we just ran that straight into the audio sync, we wouldn't hear anything because its maximum uh, frequency would be about 30 hertz, uh, way below what we can probably hear, or not much less than we can hear. Anyway, so what I want to do is take and multiply this by uh, sinusoid at uh, uh, 1 kilohertz. So we'll translate it up, uh, complex up conversion, so we can hear it with an amplitude of one. And uh, this generates, uh, again, complex, so uh, cosine plus J sine into this thing and uh, multiply it together. And uh, we only need to look at the real part because it's BPSK. We're not going to get anything out of the imaginary. And we're going to run that straight into the audio sync. Uh, the second path it's going to go to is into the QT GUI sync. Uh, I uh, have the FFT size set to pretty small, 256. That's because we're only doing 250 samples per second, so we'll get an update about once every second. Um, and uh, the bandwidth is also set to uh, the, the sample rate, 250 hertz. You can see I've just taken that sample rate and multiplied it by 8, you know, the same that we have right here in the samples per symbol. Now, the this other resampler down here, the third path, I multiply it by 1,000. And that's to get up to the minimum uh, sample rate that I can send to the USERP, which is going is to inter interpolate it back inside of there up to uh, uh, 100 mega samples per second. So 250 uh, kilo samples per second. And the USERP is set to uh, uh, 3.6 megahertz for its center frequency. And you can see I've set its sample rate to 31.25 times 8 times 1,000, which is my uh, interpolation right here. All right, now we're going to let this thing rip, and I want to hit this um, execute button. You should be able to hear some audio and uh, see some uh, uh, waveforms, and we could receive it if we have a transmitter tuned to the usurp frequency. So it sounds like PSK31, so look at the, the spectrum right here. Uh, where each one of these minor divisions is 10 hertz, so we're at 10, 20, about 30 hertz out on this side, 30 hertz on that side, so 60 hertz wide, but that's for a 100 dB dynamic range, so uh, it's actually a lot narrower than that. Um, so you'll see in a second the, the, the true output on a spectrum analyzer. Let's go look at the time domain. Um, Anyway, the blue is the real output, the I, and the imaginary red is going to be the Q. Uh, since we're doing BPSK, we're only going to see a real output. And this is baseband amplitude, so this represents the RF envelope if we were to be looking at the upconverted uh, signal. but. Uh, so since we're filtering this thing, you know, transmitting ones and zeros, uh, every time we cross through zero right here, you know, the, the car RF carrier is going to go to zero amplitude, and the phase is also going to invert. So you can see the, the narrow, uh, narrow ones right here, the individual ones and zeros, and uh, they're going to collapse down and come back up in amplitude, the RF carriers, and, uh, and uh, transmit our uh, PSK signal We're about a one second time scale. You saw the preamble along the string you saw right there. Now let's go over the waterfall display and let this thing fill up a little bit. Um, go ahead and take and uh, 
we want to be able to see how much of our bandwidth we're really using. So let's uh, decrease the dynamic range of this thing a lot and get it out to about, ah, that looks good, about right there. Uh, so the red's here about, you know, minus 5, the about uh, minus 25 for the green right here. So this is a little bit better picture of the occupied bandwidth. So you can see this is uh, 10 hertz per minor division. So 10, uh, 20, we're at about 15 on one side and 15 on the other. So uh, uh, yeah, about 30 hertz. Uh, so it looks a lot better than it did back here on the, uh, the frequency display. It looks like we're using a lot more bandwidth. Uh, Going back to the time domain display, uh, this is why we had to multiply it by that constant right there since uh, we took and, uh, you know, didn't multiply it, we'd exceed the, the floating point value of, of plus one or minus one. And when that happens, we're going to uh, uh, overdrive the DAC and uh, create some, clip it and create some very bad distortions uh, and intermods. Uh, uh, and back to the excess bandwidth. Uh, what happens if we bring this back to zero, you know, we're transmitting one bit, that's a finite amount of energy, and we can either spread that out in amplitude or we can spread it out in bandwidth. So we decrease excess bandwidth and narrow the bandwidth, that means we need to go higher in amplitude. So uh, if we did that, we'd probably go above one. Um, and we can, if we do, we can multiply that, that back down, but what you've just done, you've increased the peak to average ratio. So your transmitter, has to be, have a lot more headroom before you hit its uh, its uh, clipping, you know, and so you know you, you're going to generate a lot more intermods given you know a certain efficiency uh, operating point in your amplifier. So if we allow if we allow more bandwidth to be used, we're going to reduce our peak to average ratio and uh, be able to run with a uh, little bit uh, um, cleaner uh, signal. I've taken and run the output of the uh, the usurp into the spectrum analyzer here. It's not going right now. I've captured the trace. Uh, the spectrum analyzer 8566B is set to a 100 hertz bandwidth. It's centered right at 3.6 megahertz. Uh, resolution bandwidth is 10 hertz, which is kind of wide for 30 hertz BPSK, but uh, it'll work. Uh, video bandwidth is set to 1 hertz, as low as we can go, so we can get a lot of averaging. Uh, even with that 1 hertz video bandwidth, since the pattern repeats itself uh, often enough during the sweep, um, we're going to get a little uh, uh, spike in this in there, and, and the data, you know, is not random either. We have the pre and post table, and that's what you're seeing at the center, that little spike uh, up and down. The spectrum analyzer is sweeping through right when we got the pre or the post table, and we got some uh, non-random energy. Uh, but what I did, I took, took the marker on this thing and moved it right to the left or, of that spike, right at the flat top of the passband. Uh, and then I uh, did a delta marker and moved 3 dB down. Then did another delta marker and moved all the way to the right side of the spectrum so I can get another uh, uh, 3 dB. So the, mar the two markers are equal. That comes out to 21 hertz bandwidth. Now if you take and... Um, Take your 31.25, divide that by 2, because remember, without the excess bandwidth, we want a half a bit per, one half hertz per bit per second. So that's approximately 15. Then you multiply that by 1.35, because we have 0.35 excess bandwidth. That comes right out to 21 hertz. So we have 21 hertz of occupied bandwidth for our BPSK 31. And uh, again, you know, you could narrow down that excess bandwidth uh, get a little bit more peak to average ratio or you could widen it up. You probably want to go a little bit narrower since you don't want to stomp on other people next to you but then you'd have to back off. Alright, what I've done, I've got the user feeding a very short dipole off my alpha buddy pole. It's uh, it's about a two foot dipole right now. Uh, it's sitting on the table on another workbench and uh, got the KXC transceiver hooked up to a long wire on the outside of my main uh, receiving transmitting antenna. Uh, you can see it's still at an S9 signal, even with about 0 dBm out of the usurp and a uh, uh, very short and uh, inefficient unmatched dipole. Uh, but I've got the, got the PSK31 decoder turned on the KX3, and it's getting the text with zero errors in the thing. Looks pretty good. Uh, so it, it's a su successful experiment. Uh, pretty simple one in just that I'm transmitting data from a file. Uh, the next step is to turn it into more of a real-time uh, operation where uh, GNU Radio needs to send alternating ones and zeros when I'm not typing anything and then when I press a keystroke I need to inject that very code into the stream. 
I'm still not sure whether I, that's going to require a new radio uh, block diagram. Hopefully I can write it in Python since I'm learning that a little bit. I don't know any C++ or, or whether I don't believe I can do it straight in uh, the GNU Radio Companion. It's going to have to actually be some code, but uh, that's the next step. This proves that, you know, it's successful and uh, it can be done. At, uh, the next is going to be working out kinks in code. Anyway, 